I'm Veronica Roberts, and I curated the exhibition Lee Bontecue, All Freedom in Every Sense. I picked the title from a quote the artist said uh, in a letter to an art historian in which she described her goals as an artist to encompass all freedom in every sense, no borders, no boundaries. The work that Bonnacky said in the community was working on, without studio systems, off and on, the work is really, at one point, futuristic and also primordial and primitive. And the whole form of the sculpture sort of looks like outer space, it's like a galaxy of, of stars or constellations, kind of slowly whirling in space. But if you look at it more closely, you also can see this strange kind of primordial quality to the work. She mentions working on it primarily at night, and she describes working on the studio in Pennsylvania and how, because it was night, all the wires disappeared, and as she looked at it in the video, she sees white flare in order to kind of fill it in space. One of the things that's interesting about Yvonne's career is how successful she was as a woman artist in the 1960s, because there really were not that many women who had her level of fame and she really was selling out every exhibition there. She was, uh, MoMA was buying her work. She was being bought across the country. Everyone was buying her work. She just was an extraordinary pioneer and, and one of the most important women artists and the most important artists of that generation, period. Some of my favorite works of the exhibition are bonds that are made out of this rich velvet stuff. It's kind of fascinating how Bonacue arrived at working with stuff as a studio. She was living in Rome. She had a full bright fellowship in the late 1950s. She actually did well, and she adjusted the oxygen levels on her welding portion. Her foot started just pouring out. And she realized it was a kind of blackness she always wanted in her work and her drawings so that you can't get with charcoal or flashlight. So she began drawing with her welding torch. She called them world space. The two wall mounted sculptures in the exhibition use really interesting material that I've taken a look at Bonacu's early work. Um, if you get close to it, you can tell they're made out of canvas because the traditional material, I think, but she's using it for a sculpture, so she's already kind of blurring the line between painting and sculpture. Um, but it's not the traditional canvas you would expect a painter to use either. When you look at it, it's really soiled, it's kind of this interlocking beige taffy for it. The color of, of orange that you can set in dirty, and there are small holes and rips and tears in it. And the reason that is is because it's, it's not painter's canvas, it's actually canvas that she's salvaged from the laundromat she lived above. And when I was looking at it in, in our storage facility, just getting ready for the exhibition and taking a close to look at it, I noticed what I thought seemed to be a human skin all throughout this piece. So we had an artist questionnaire that the that we want to have filled out in the 60s, and she told us on a previous piece, and I couldn't find the animal skin anyway. So I took some photos, I spoke with our sculptor who sent it in, and she said, you know, you're absolutely right, this is definitely an animal skin, but I'm touching her. So I got in touch with the baby, and she came into the storage facility, and sure enough, she remembered that she had a roll of raw hide, raw cow hide in her studio at the time of the war. And it's kind of amazing to think that for like nearly 50 years we've owned this sculpture and we never noticed something that's so prominent in it. There's, there's almost no, no work in the exhibition that doesn't have a black thing in it, whether it's a drawing that has sort of an inky black um, circular form or more obviously, and it's because there's two large wall mounted sculptures, there's these two of these big things inside of each. And the black hole, I think, is really the signature motif for her. In the, in the wall mounted sculpture, what it's actually made out of is there's an opening in the sculpture and then the back of the sculpture is lined with black velvet. It's the kind of velvet used for theatrical curtains. Um, and she picked it because it's metal, it doesn't reflect light. And it creates this incredible, incredible magnetic 
Thank you. 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 Thank you.